Good morning, my creative friends. This is Dr. Manette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette, where we gather together to create in community and talk about visual journaling, creative process, and all things life, love, and art that fascinate me. And this week we've been exploring a variety of animal symbols and all month long we are talking about archetypal imagery symbol and metaphor this is my last animal of the week and it was really difficult to choose the direction that i wanted to go this morning and i'll share more about that but this week so far if you haven't caught up on some of the other videos yesterday we painted with bear and this one's not quite finished but it will get there i've got lots of lion printouts here you can see and i started off the the week painting with horse and then this sweet little owl and i have found myself just sort of repeating these animals that tend to show up in my own life and create a practice over and over again and last night i was so sure that i was going to paint a llama and um, had a picture all picked out for inspiration and ultimately decided this morning that i was going to paint lion and i printed out some drawing instructions and ended up finding this shutterstock image because I really wanted a lion facing sideward. I printed out a couple of different ones just trying to get that shape of the face. And I'm going to show today how I'm going to take someone else's design. Good morning Kay and really make that design my own. This is a, a copyrighted image. I would feel comfortable using this image if I had purchased the image which I will often do, but today I'm just loving the, the shape of his face. And so I'm gonna use this lion print out to get the, the shape of the, the face on to my page. And I've got a piece of deli paper here and I had this other lion face and I, I just kept looking this morning until I found one that I really loved. And so, again, I'm just wanting to capture the shape of the lion onto the page. And so I'm gonna be tracing just his face. I'm just using a big old Sharpie here, getting the little bit of that shape of his nose. This is all gonna get painted over and made my own. Want to make sure that we just get that again, that shape of his face. So I'm using Sharpie on deli paper to capture this beautiful guy. And I'm not, you know, as worried about the mane. I really just want the shape of his face. And now I can let go of the drawing created by someone else and use this lion and create my mane from here but i have the basic shape of the face which is always kind of the hardest part and it's interesting that they have this i kind of want this to all maybe even be the same and sort of cross over there and make his nose go a little bit more there so again just We'll come in and make the, this piece our own, but we wanna have a way to simply capture the, the shape of the lion before I start painting. These are some of the fun ways that I create art a little bit more quickly. Also on wejotanimals.com, there was, this is a very nice, simple way of drawing a lion also. So wejotanimals.com. There is a great resource for learning to draw animals. So that's where we're gonna go today is with a lion painting on the page. I started by 
putting just some black paint on the, on the page or black gesso would be great as well and wanting to just create a different base underneath our lion bueno dias blanca glad you're here my friend hope you're staying dry over there and not getting uh too much flooding where you are and I wanted to, I'm like, why is that so glary? And then I realized I had my extra light on. But I wanted to start with black because I think it just creates a really different uh, effect. Creates a really different effect. And I haven't done journaling on this page yet. So I'm going to start like I did yesterday with building up some layers and using some of those oil pastels. And I was looking up some of the words, so I'm going to start with words instead of images today. So lion brings the gifts of courage. That red doesn't show up on there that well. Valor. Wisdom. Strength. They're incredibly loyal loyalty their leaders the females the the queens are the ones that are actually the hunters right um in some cultures they symbolize wealth and in shaman language inter interestingly this was something i did not know about lion I'm looking for a different color here I'm going to go back to my yellow. They're about harnessing the power of the sun, which I thought was very interesting. Harnessing the power of the sun. So I just want to plant the seeds of some of that animal symbolism. I'm so glad you're fine, Blanca. I know my brother at one point up in Santa Barbara was uh, digging trenches in his yard to... Um, it's chilly this morning to make sure that the water wasn't seeping up into their house and they're on top of a hill. So I love this harnessing the power of the sun. So yesterday I was uh, poking around Facebook and a friend had uh, just come back from a trip where she'd had a fun encounter on the East Coast with some llamas and she had these adorable pictures of llamas and I'm like, oh, I wanna paint those llamas. Wouldn't that be fun to paint some llamas? And I found a fun picture. And I, you know, woke up this morning thinking I'm going to do something super fun and colorful and playful with a llama. And then I was reading some more in a book I had mentioned before, which is Inspired, or yes, Inspired by Matt Richtel. Inspired by Matt Richtel. And he was talking this morning in the chapter I was reading about the connection between mindfulness, the connection between mindfulness and creativity and citing some, and I'm just continuing to draw on this page because it feels fun, and uh, mindfulness and creativity. And he had interviewed a woman named Emma Sapala who wrote a book called The Happiness Track has done a lot of work with veterans and big companies around the impact of PTSD and what happens when we're impacted by PTSD and how can we shift some of that response. And part of the conversation that led me to this uh, painting of the lion this morning was they were talking about how our fear of judgment is a often residual of PTSD experience of having been on the receiving end of extreme judgment at different points in our lives, especially around creativity. Sometimes that judgment can come from within. And they, he interviewed a super creative poetry writing military leader in Afghanistan about how he used mindfulness to manage the feelings and emotions and stay present and connected to his own humanity 
in the midst of war. And it was a fascinating chapter in conversation. But the point of the conversation was really about the impact of mindfulness on calming our minds so we have more access to our creativity. And he was talking about, find my scissors here. He was talking about different breathing techniques used with people with severe PTSD to help them move through the imaginary response that they were feeling to a perceived threat when the actual threat was no longer there any longer, when the actual threat was no longer there any longer. And I'm probably not explaining it as well as I, I could be. So this is a piece of deli paper. If you're just joining me, I found this gorgeous image on Shutterstock, but I wanna make this image my own. This is a copyright image, but I liked the shape of the face. So I took a Sharpie and traced that onto some deli paper and I'm gonna use Map Medium to get that down on my page and make this lion my own, but I have at least the shape of his face here. So, People talk a lot about the fight versus flight and our innate response left over from eons and eons ago when we really were in fear for our lives from lion and we had to be quick and fast and really trust that fear response. Good morning, Marion, and um, be able to run from the lion. And so today, we don't run from lion in the same way that we did in prehistoric times in fear for our lives, but the metaphoric lion still causes us to have that um, fight or flight response. And so he likened the judgment that we fear to a lion. And so that's my long-winded story for how we got to painting a lion this morning instead of a llama. And um, I may have to go back and, and paint llama some other time as well, because this llama picture that I found was stinking cute and my friend's photographs were amazing. I don't care if this, uh, and I'm just putting that medium all over the top of all of those words that I wrote on there. And I don't care if I get any color onto my lion face here either. But when I started to think about how judgment really stops us from accessing creativity and also how input from others, too much input can stop us from accessing our own Creativity. So he was talking about the benefits of mindfulness and the research of a woman named Emma Sapala, who has a, a TED Talk. I haven't watched the TED Talk yet. And um, so this will dry pretty clear. I love that I can see, see the, the shape of the lion, but I'm going to paint this whole thing right into, right into my page here. I have my little space heater on the floor behind me and my kitty is getting as close as she can to that space heater. It's a little little chilly this morning. 25 and foggy according to according to my computer. And talking about the connection between mindfulness and access to creativity and I watched a, another video with her. I was curious about some of her breathing and if you've ever heard of sort of square breathing it's one of the things she's a proponent of where you're really sort of breathing almost as um like an imaginary following the lines of a box where it's four breaths in hold for four release for four hold for four and following that that square pattern and it's a very calm calm way of breathing. She also talked about a few different other things, but she talked about how culturally we don't honor and value calm, that we are a culture that values intensity. 
and we value intensity at work and at play. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's so true. If you've ever watched a professional sporting event or been to a live concert, right? Or been playing, you know, a pickup game of some kind or maybe in my house. And um, yes, it is, Marion, so true to be able to just to follow the lines of the box. Having that visual aspect helps a lot. But when you live in a culture that doesn't value calm, you feel like you have to be in fear of judgment of others when you're in places where you're advocating for what you need the most. Like it's just such an interesting sort of, you know, mind boggling. And I've always thought about it through that lens of we're definitely a culture in this country that values productivity and hard work and getting things done but I hadn't put that label of intensity to it and it's like no wonder we feel exhausted and in need of deep rest one of my six pillars of a radiant life is deep rest and so lion yes lion is all about courage and wisdom and leadership harnessing the power of the sun strength but they are also all about deep rest. They're big cats, right? And they're they're playful and they're curious, but they spend a lot of their time napping and sleeping and letting the women do all the work, right? Because the, the male lions are the protectors, but the women in the the females in the pride are often often the hunters. All right, so I'm thinking about where I want to go with my lion here. And thinking also about this idea of how calm and mindfulness are the true source of our own creative ideas and how judgment stops us, not from having ideas, but from sharing our ideas. Most of us have a bazillion brilliant creative ideas a day. They come and go, and the more we're in touch with our creativity, the more ideas that we have. And yet we can get really caught up in worrying what others are going to think, not sharing those ideas. So I'm going to start to just get some yellows down on my page here. Love this uh, Naples yellow. This one is in this Naples yellow hue is a lovely, lovely yellow. Probably gonna want some of this dark burnt umber here, bringing back some of those same colors that I painted with owl the other day. Maybe some nice yellow ochre. So I sort of love the neutral palette of lion, and I may leave the the black background. I started with black today. So just building up my palette here with some lion-like colors. And I'm just going to go for it and see where I get to. Again, I don't have a particular vision of where I'm starting. I'm going to want to add some, some color in here to, in order to uh, make sure that that deli paper around the edges gets sort of painted in to the image overall. Just getting a base layer of color down. Still pretty transparent so I can still see those lines there and keep the shape of my face. But the thing about lions that always, to me, is so majestic are their incredible manes. So I know that I want him to have this gorgeous ruff all around his head. And that's where we're going to bring in lots of our fun colors, maybe some marks and patterns over the top. Working kind of like I did yesterday with a small brush and letting the the brush itself start to create the, the texture from some of those different brush strokes. Now that he's on there, I can see that I'm going to want this to be 
blue over here to sort of contrast and complement with that yellow. So I think I'm going to get some blue down over here, just getting the base. Notice by just simply starting with this outline of the drawing, how quickly this painting can come together. So I didn't spend a ton of time agonizing over how to draw the lion. The face is the trickiest part. I wanted to just get the face down so that I could come in and have a lot of fun with painting. But I am sitting a lot with this conversation around the connection between mindfulness and art, the connection between mindfulness and art and how art flows from what I call deep reflection. And I'm as guilty as the next person for, you know, signing up for too many classes or getting sucked down a Instagram or YouTube rabbit hole, including, you know, my own of watching what other people are doing. And it's why I really want this particular experience to be a co-creative experience and that you guys are over there working on whatever you're making, because to me, it's powerful to create in community, but to create our own vision and version of the things that inspire us. Let's see what we got here. We got a little turquoise blue. We'll start with some turquoise and get that down on the page and see what we think. And as someone who has really struggled with more traditional forms of sitting meditation, things like the box breath, the box breath help, but also looking for active forms of meditation. Walking is one, drawing is one. I love using malas and prayers or mantras. The things that just give my brain a, a place to focus so that my body can relax long enough to come into that place of calm, come in that place of calm. So we've got our lion starting to come together here on the page, and I'm feeling like he's just a little too puffy here. Maybe I'm going to push that. <coughs> Excuse me, main back just a little bit. Sorry to cough in your ear. And I love that I can still see some of my marks behind some of those grungy bits. I also know that, again, I planted those seeds and written those words on the page underneath. I haven't finished my bear from yesterday yet because I know it wants to have some words on it, but I haven't quite figured out what um, what I want that to look like. And I knocked something off the table, but I'm not sure what. All right, so I'm going to come in and start to build him up with some color and some more detail. And again, just having fun with this. I'm, you know, never like worried about super, super precise, realistic. The thing that always matters to me the most is to get the the shape of the the eye and the nose proportionate. You saw me struggle on Monday with the the horse painting, and I did end up sort of going back and. Just shifting it a little bit to just get it to a place where it felt a little more symmetrical. So I often look for ways that, oh, he's getting some blue in his mane there. We're just going to roll with it. It 
exactly, Marion, just going for the essence of the subject, going for the essence of lion. Definitely work on that a little bit. And as that blue is kind of mixing in there, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I want to add some more bold colors to him. And I don't know. Mix some of these together to get kind of a mid dark tone because he does have some dimension to his face, has, you know, a little bit of a cheekbone here. And usually their nose also. Just kind of getting that furry inside of the ear. They always kind of are amazing, like when you see them up close, how much fur they actually have. So these are some of my original lines still in here. Let that blue kind of mix in a little bit. So he's going to come together pretty quickly today to capture the essence of lion, sort of surprising me how fast he's coming together. But I can tell I've reached a spot where it's I need to get him dry so I can start to come in with a little more detail. Little shadows under his jawline, sort of just giving his face just a little bit of dimension. I do kind of like the, the drama of those black outlines, so I might even come back <clears throat> with my Sharpie and add those same black outlines around the edges of his face. And I never thought about lion really as a symbol for mindfulness, but you know, for me, mindfulness has a lot to do with focus and our ability to focus and quiet our mind and to just allow our thoughts to float by without feeling like we have to glom on to all of them or stop and inspect them. And so thinking about lion, both ability to fiercely focus on a target, right? For on prey or a mate and also their ability to just be calm and still and restful. So let me get this guy dry here and I will be right back. So I'd love to hear what other people love about lion or what you think about when you think lions and are they intimidating? Are they inspiring? What are other thoughts about lion? Right, so I have this little pop-up on the bottom of my computer screen that um, every now and again just catches my eye because it changes and it's the little weather and all of a sudden I got a little warning saying it's dense fog outside and it's, uh, well, it's light out, but I have no idea if it's actually foggy or not. Yes, they can go from calm to fierce in a moment. I love that. 
calm to fierce in a moment. And if you have had house cats, you know that calm can be deceptive. It doesn't mean that they're not watchful, that they're not focused. All right, and if we come in and start to brighten him up, One time when my kids were little, I think maybe Maggie, Maggie was walking, which, you know, meant Connor was maybe only four or five. He was, he was pretty young and we were in San Antonio, Texas, visiting family and grandparents and San Antonio has a very nice zoo certainly i have many many fond childhood memories myself of being there and we had taken the kids to the zoo and the lion was out sitting on a rock sunning himself and connor roared at the lion and the lion roared back it's one of those moments that I will never forget, and I know my son Connor will never forget either, that moment of just intimate connection, right? That moment of intimate connection with an animal to hear the little roar of this child and then to roar back, not in any aggressive, scary way, but just in answer. It was one of those magical, magical moments. And that lion had a huge, huge ruff. Just bringing back some of these brighter colors, brightening him up. I love how he's starting to come together here. I really want to get this sense of this all being. And I love it when things come together really quickly. So it can be, it's fun to sit here and paint and paint and paint, but there are those moments in time when things just sort of magically come together and I could spend a lot of time making him more detailed, more complex, and it doesn't feel necessary to do that. I kind of like how he's looking. I'm, I am going to come back with my uh, Sharpie and just add some outlines and bring a little bit of that those outlines of his face back and I got his ear a little pointy but lions actually have round ears got a little carried away there make his ear stand out a little bit more and this is also one of those moments where I've shared before another great tip learned from my friend Andrea that it's really helpful to come in and take a picture of your painting with your phone. This is great for when you're working on canvas or just in an art journal. And then to look and see, are there enough lights and darks? And so I'm pretty happy with the, the darks and the contrast between the lion and the blue of the background. Because I started with black, I got a different, it gives a different effect. Also, I can see where I've got some jaggy bits up here that I might want to smooth out and maybe a little more darks, but it's just such a, a great way to just kind of get a sense of where our painting is. And again, <clears throat> giving Credit to my friend Andrea. I know a lot of artists teach that, but she's the one that I learned that from. So I did like having this darker bits down here to just give him a little dimension, but then maybe a little less of that 
up here on this part and I, I can't necessarily see that with my naked eye. Okay, so this is one of those moments where I noticed that I could get really caught up in details and adding too much detail. So I do want to add some white to his eye and I am not seeing what a white Posca is. Perfect. So I am going to come in and just add a little white to his eye. And that little highlight is often the thing that makes him look realistic, right? The thing that makes him realistic. And I'm probably also going to work on his nose here a little bit. And I realize his nose needs to go all the way over there. And I'm doing this with white, but I'm going to decide if I'm going to come back in with the black. So that's looking a little bit better. I'm actually kind of liking the white outlines on him. So what happens if we just kind of let him stand out from the, the page even just a little bit more? Not sure. I may still go back and add that black, but I can. It's easy to cover over the white. And making sure, just taking a look here at that shape of his nose and thinking, really, that needs to be more over here. I also have a brown Posca sitting here. These were literally just sitting on my desk, so he definitely needs the place on his face that his whiskers go from that always just kind of ending up looking like dots. And I'm going to want to come back in here and do some journaling about lion and this idea of him you know there's a lot of wisdom and courage and strength associated with lion but also this idea that lion really represents calm right that lion represents calm they're they have a lot to teach us as masters of napping and deep rest I'm going to get him dry here, get his face dry, and come in with a, a micron and add a little bit more detail. And as I'm looking at this lion and, you know, thinking about sort of the man or human, sort of that innate fear of the wild or being chased by animals, like, we don't have that fear anymore. It's pretty rare, especially on this continent, that we would be chased by a lion. And so when we come back to this idea of what are the fears, what are the fears that are sort of running that, running us and creating that flight or fight response, and I come back to thinking about what he was talking about in the, in the book this morning, inspired by Matt Richtel, which is all about what makes us creative and creative process. And talking about this idea of judgment as something that really haunts us as humans, especially fear of being judged by others, which often leads to us really judging ourselves. 
and causes us to not share our creative ideas out with the world, to not share our creative ideas out with the world because of fear of judgment. And to me, it's such a shame because our creative abilities to see things differently, to problem solve, you know, it's what makes humans unique. And I feel like there's a lot of problems that need to be solved. And people probably have creative ideas and suggestions and solutions. And they don't get shared, whether in companies or out in the world, because of that fear of judgment. And I've done a, a lot of research about what happens inside of companies and schools that don't create cultures of openness and curiosity, but instead have cultures of judgment. And so they're really impacting, really impacting how, I think I want to get in a little furry in here. People are willing or unwilling to share their creative ideas, especially outside of the creative industries. It's expected in the creative industries, but people in any part of a group or company have that ability to think creatively and see things differently. Okay, so he just needs a little bit more drama going on here. A little more detail. You can stand off the page just a little bit more. It's looking kind of serious there. But I think about that a lot, and he talks in the book about the, the classic studies that have been done that show how children in uh, my white is almost dead about how children in fourth grade have just shut down so much. Their creativity isn't gone, but they have lost their sort of open-hearted curiosity and willingness to share because of your judgment as early as fourth grade. It's something that continues throughout our lives, so no wonder we have such deep-seated go find another one concerns about being judgment because they are often early early childhood wounds all right he, these need to be a little bit wider let's see we find a tiny tiny brush in here somewhere I want his whiskers to stand out. coming in on this guy. This might maybe a little bit too much. This is where I tend to put all that white on and then want to just go paint it all over again. But it felt like he just needed that just trusting myself to maybe be a little more assertive with those with those whites on there and then to just step away right just to step away and i think it's worth really looking at our own creative process and creative practice are we making time and sort of giving ourselves permission to 
let go of input from others and trust the our own creative direction. I can't remember if I shared this week. I was in a wonderful retreat last week, a business planning retreat, and one of the questions that was asked was, what do you want to learn this year? And I had this huge insight and aha that I don't want to learn anything, that I want to really devote time and energy to mastery. It doesn't mean I won't take classes or attend events or anything like that. It was really more about the energy of I don't need another habit or hobby or marketing tool or I don't need more input from others unless it's around getting better at the things that I already love to do. So that's kind of some of my thinking around giving myself permission to just trust that I know what I'm doing, trust that I know what I'm doing. I'm blending in some of that, these lines in there. All right, he's feeling feeling pretty good. My last step is definitely going to be to come in and do some writing. It's kind of making me want to go and rewatch The Lion King, which I haven't seen in years. It was too scary for my daughter. There are definitely some scary characters and scary parts in there. And there we have a simple lion. Very simple palette, simple colors, right? The orange and yellow are across each other. I think it's like a split complementary or something. Um, across each other on the color wheel. I can do the snap a, a photo trick and see how we ended up. Wants me to log in. And we're still looking pretty good with those whites and darks with those whites and darks right and um, enough contrast to make me happy and feel like he is standing out from the page I don't think there is enough here but my sense is here that I'm going to want to just come in and yeah so it's um it's down to the nub of the tip and so it's actually breaking through the scraping through to the background there which I don't want so when I'm complete here I will go find a gel pen it's one of the ways that I love to finish off visual journaling pages similar to what I did with Owl over here Owl got an affirmation and then I ended up doing a bunch of journaling in white on this page over here but you know so much for me a visual journaling is about creating meaning finding that place of calm and having a way to capture my thoughts differently beyond traditional journaling i love journaling as well i already spent an hour in my journal this morning maybe it wasn't that long because i haven't been up quite that long but just noticing where are you hesitant to put your own thoughts and words on the page would a quote work here? Would a notes about your relationship with Lion, like what could you add to the page to really finish it off that would make it feel completely your own? And I think that's it for me today with our Lion painting. It's the end of our week of animal symbolism. And next week, over actually I think the last two weeks of January, I really want to play, I'll probably be doing more collage magazine collage and um oh thank you Blanca I so appreciate that I love being here and it makes a huge world of difference to have the three of you joining me live on a regular basis like it just totally makes it worth it and makes it easy to keep going and I'm committed to this journey this year 
no matter what, minus probably, you know, a few travel days. But we're going to start looking at archetypal images and the Jungian classic archetypes and how those archetypes can show up in our art and speak to us in some innovative ways and how I use collage and visual journaling to connect to the energy of archetypes. So that's what we're up to next week. I am so excited to be participating in an online Zen Tingle retreat starting tomorrow night and celebrating my 58th birthday and um, looking forward to another circle around the year and to see what the year brings. And I want to enter into this year with the courage, the wisdom, the strength, and the napping ability of Lion. Have a beautiful rest of your week. I will be back next Monday. I am here Monday to Thursday, 7 a.m. Mountain Time. Dr. Manette Riordan, this is Painting in Your PJs Live. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.